Welcome to the 3M product training video for the 3M Jupiter powered air turbo unit. This video will explain how to prepare and maintain the turbo unit for use. In order to ensure that the alarm point is set correctly, the turbo needs to be calibrated correctly. You will have received two airflow tubes with your turbo. For calibration, you should use the tube with the black ball and a restrictor at the bottom. Insert a fully charged battery and turn on the unit without fitting filters. The turbo should be allowed to run for approximately 10 minutes before continuing with the calibration to allow the motor to reach its operational temperature. Insert the calibration tube into the outlet of the turbo and check that the bottom of the black ball is level with the mark on the tube. If the ball is in the correct position, there is no need to recalibrate. To recalibrate the unit, press and hold down the switch. After three seconds, a second beep will sound. Continue to hold down the switch during the calibration. The airflow will drop and then ramp up. Once the bottom of the ball is level with the line, release the switch and the alarm point will be set. Check the airflow by using the provided airflow indicator. Holding the unit with the airflow indicator upright, check that the bottom of the ball rests at or above the minimum flow mark. Check that the in-use alarms are working by placing a hand over the outlet of the turbo. The alarm should sound and the fan LED should flash. When in use, it is easy to identify the cause of an alarm. If you see a green flashing light, then the unit is working correctly. A flashing battery light accompanied by a long intermittent beep means a low battery alarm. A flashing fan light accompanied by a long intermittent beep means that the flow is approaching or is below manufacturer's minimum design flow rate due to clogged filters or obstructed hose. To attach the belt to the turbo, slot the belt clip through the retainers on the back of the unit. Ensuring that the belt is the correct way up, slide the belt clip through the slots and clip into place. Ensure that filters are in date and of the same type. Attach the filters to the turbo by screwing onto the unit, ensuring that they are held in place with a positive click. Pre-filters can additionally be used by removing the filter cover and putting on top of the main filter and replacing the filter cover to hold it in place. Select the appropriate breathing tube for your application and connect the top end to the head top. Insert the bayonet end of the breathing tube into the turbo and pull gently to ensure it is fitted firmly. Adjust and buckle the waist belt to fit comfortably around your waist. To charge the battery, plug the cord into the side of the battery. An amber LED indicates that the battery is charging. Once fully charged, the amber LED will go out and the green LED will light up. If both LEDs are lit, then there is a battery fault or the battery is out of its charging temperature range of 0 to 40 degrees Celsius. To replace either the blower part or the electronics part of the turbo, remove the screws located in all four corners. Separate the two halves and replace the appropriate unit. Reattach the two halves always using the new screws provided. Repeat the calibration steps to ensure that the replacement is working. Additionally, the Jupiter-powered air turbo unit can be used in potentially explosive environments when used with the intrinsically safe kit, which comprises of a specific battery and a dust protective pouch. Check that the battery is marked correctly before inserting into the turbo. The IS battery has blue labels and carries the appropriate regulatory markings for use in certain explosive atmospheres. Place the turbo in the pouch, pushing the turbo outlet through the hole provided and line the filled supports up appropriately. Attach the belt clip to the turbo, feeding through the slots provided in the pouch. Ensuring that the belt is the correct way up, slide the belt clip through the slots and clip into place. Roll up the excess part of the pouch and tuck it into the space between the turbo and the belt. Filters are attached by screwing into the two ports on the back of the turbo. Ensure that the threads are correctly aligned and that the filters lock into place with a firm click. Removal of the battery requires a double movement. The clip at the back of the turbo must be pulled outwards 
and then the battery pushed down before sliding out of the turbo. 